punished by my father. I lost my divinity. Betrayed by my lover. I lost my trust. Tricked to be owned by a coward. I lost all hope. Falling into insanity over the truth of it all. I lost my life. The myth of Brynhildr is a truly lamentable tale of a young shield maiden losing everything she had, piece by piece. She could not help but love the man who saved her from the eternal prison Odin had cast on her. She taught him everything she knew about Valhalla, about the age of the gods, about the primordial runes, and their love seemed to be true. They devoted themselves to each other at first sight, even when the man had sworn that he could not by the law of his journey to fulfill prophecy. But in time, the lust for journey yearned in this man to leave the maiden. He forgot about her. I found another, a relatively normal woman this time, for a family. This man was named Sigurd. And he would later confront Ben Hilter again, saying the magic she had taught him. To trap her into marrying a king, lacking the nerve to propose to her himself by taking the king's form in disguise. Although unhappy with this arrangement, the maiden came to accept it, attempting to delude herself with thoughts that Sigurd truly had forgotten about her under the persuasion of some drug or poison. This, of course, would be futile. Brynhildr became so far gone that she taunted Sigurd's second love about being married to a king and the answer she sought was finally revealed. The frightful maiden withdrew, confronted Sigurd, and killed him, stem to sternum, along with his family, as well as herself, hoping that she could move heaven and earth to find Sigurd again in the underworld to be with him once more. As she earnestly believed they were always meant to be, she still has not found him in the form she remembers. But, perhaps, you, Master, could you be Sigurd, in disguise, or possibly in another life? Alas, if that is the case that you might be, you are all I want, and that is exactly why I cannot allow you to live. You must die, so that I cannot feel the same pain again. As terrible as that sounds, should you treat Brynhildr like a weapon and not a kind person, you will be safe and she will obey your every command without a second thought, coldly, quietly, and efficiently. Lo and behold, she does make for a fantastic weapon as a lancer. In fact, quite possibly a superior lancer than even the supposedly unkillable Queen of the Land of Shadows, Scott Hawk. Despite having two completely different pasts and personalities, these two women are undeniably and incredibly similar in form and function. Thus, they're immediately comparable. For starters, can't go wrong with starting at the basics, HP and attack values. From level 1 to level 100, both Brynhildr and Skatak share the same exact HP value, but Bryn is the stronger of the two with slightly more attack power. Such a minute difference doesn't change much between them, but it's a good base to keep in mind as their skills and noble phantasms begin to diverge later. In fact, we might as well jump headfirst into their noble phantasms, since these will be at the core of their comparisons and their contrasts from here on out. A single target bust NP versus a single target quick NP. What does this mean? Well, can't avoid it any longer. It's time for everybody's favorite lesson, mathematics. A few factors to keep in mind before I make your head explode, just to give you a taste of what I'm dealing with here by explaining this to you. First, noble phantasms are never affected by their placement in the chain unless chained directly to other noble phantasms. Second, said noble phantasms are never given a bonus by whatever type of card you place in front of them at the beginning of a chain. No critical gather buff from a quick card, no boost to NP gain from an arts card, no attack increase from a buster card. None of that. They are neutral from start to finish, unless buffed by an outside skill, trait modifier, or craft essence. So with that said, here are the numbers, and I'll try to make this as digestible as I can. <coughs> 
Let's say... Brynhildr and Skathak will each practice launching their respective Noble Phantasms at a dummy target that can make the most of their unique strengths for a mere 1,000 base damage. All Buster cards begin with a 150% power output, but all Quick cards begin with just an 80% power output. Already, Skathak is facing a major disadvantage. Lucky for her, however, Brynhildr's own unique damage multiplier on her Noble Phantasm at level 1 is just 800% after interlude, while Skathak's is double that, with 1600% after interlude. Right here, Brynhildr's dummy target will be inflicted with 12,000 damage, but Scott Hawk's dummy will be inflicted with 12,800 damage. Looking good for Team Quick over here, why did I even bother with this video again? Oh wait, that's right, because we're not even close to done yet. I did say the dummy would take into account all of their unique strengths, didn't I? Ha, <laughs> yes I did. While Scott Hawk's NP does come with additional perks that can be a little strategic, such as a guaranteed stun against her target and a slight light chance for instant death, Brynhildr has her own major buff built into her Noble Phantasm. A 150% multiplier at just NP level 1 added onto the base damage multipliers if the target is categorized in the Brynhildr's beloved trait. So, without any outside buffs, Scott Hawk may have pierced her target straight through with ease, but Brynhildr's heart soars for the dummy and causes the dummy to outright KABOOM by growing to a whopping 30,000 damage score on her own. However, let's see what happens when their own skills are introduced. On paper, Scott Hawk is the clear winner, wielding two fantastic damage boosters with Primordial Rune to increase quick performance, and God Slayer to stack damage against divine targets. There are currently no undead servants, so we won't factor that in here. Meanwhile, Brynhildr only possesses one single boost, Mana Burst Flame a boost that splits itself between Buster Performance and Noble Phantasm damage. We will be utilizing both of these ladies' skills at their highest potential, at level 10 each. So, what happens? Scott Hawk launches her gay bulg into the target for a much more formidable 38,400 damage this time. Her dummy explodes too! Now, let's cut back to Brit- Oh, the whole area is literally on fire. 43,125 damage. This is fine. I will grant you this much, Skathok loyalists. There are a few more divine servants in Fate Grand Order than Brynhildr's beloved targets. There are also a couple more divine targets that will take double damage from Lancers, and far fewer that resist Lancers than those counted as Brynhildr's beloved. But it should be noted that Brynhildr will still do more damage than Skathok against each of their respective resistance available targets, for their given bonuses. And if we take out the trait multipliers and just compare Primordial Rune to Mana Burst Flame, Yes, Scott Hawk's Noble Phantasm will come off as slightly better due to a mildly superior bonus and base damage. So I've told you all about the damage they are capable of performing on their own with just their strongest attacks, and so far it is basically a tie. Scott Hawk wields a hair better base damage output, but Brynhildr is vastly stronger against targets that utilize all of her strengths. So we're just back to where we started. Right. <sighs> Patience. The answer will begin to shift as I take a tangent into the respective decks and hit counts. I'll be back to the skills by the end to bring this all full circle, trust me, since before I can do that I need to determine one critical factor to Noble Phantasms. How consistently they could be fired off in any given match. Again, we have a pretty even base to start with between them. The standard Lancer deck consisting of two Quick Cards, one Arts Card, and two Buster Cards. To make it even easier, fun fact, they both share the same exact star generation percentage of 12.2% and the same NP gain to defending against enemy attacks at 4% charge per block, but their NP gain percentage for their own attacks shows a major divide between them. A staggeringly high 1.07% for Brynhildr, and a very average 0.71% for Scott Hawk. Keep in mind, this is how much NP gauge will appear for each given hit. For the purposes of testing the highest possible NP gain between them fairly, I will go with an Arts Quick Quick Brave Chain for each servant. Brynhildr features 2 hits on her Arts card, 3 hits on each Quick card, and 5 hits on her extra attack, for a grand total of 13 hits. Scott Hawk, on the other hand, features 3 hits on her arts card, 2 hits on each quick card, and a whopping 7 hits on her extra attack, granting her a total of 14 hits. Ah, so we're almost completely even again? 
but look more closely. An arts card at the beginning of a chain grants a 100% boost to NP gain for all other cards in the chain after it. The performance of all of a given card's attributes only increase as they are featured further on a chain, and quick cards possess their own inherent NP gain, regardless of arts cards in the chain, which will increase too as they appear on the chain. In summary, boost this NP gain per hit by 100% on each card, and by the second card, these two women couldn't be more opposed. Brynhildr's NP gain only becomes substantially higher, while Scott Hawk's only becomes substantially worse. And that's also thanks to one absolutely important detail that I've neglected to mention for the sake of surprise until just this very moment, Brynhildr wields the passive skill, Riding A, which always provides a 10% boost to her two quick cards. Meanwhile, Scott Hawk wields no such extra boost, not a single one. After all of the math is formulated, this should leave Brynhildr with approximately 42% additional NP gauge and Skatok with only 26. At best, 28 if she's using her 6-hit buster attacks instead of her quick, given no controllable outside buffs or critical hits are applied, of course. And speaking of chains, I can't neglect the fact that not only are Brynhildr's quick cards much stronger, but she can perform a buster brave chain with her buster noble phantasm and two buster cards, enhancing the latter two cards and extra attack by 50% additional damage. Skatok, of course, course, cannot do this. Sure, she can make a quick Brave Chain and immediately gather more critical stars, but even Brynhildr can make up for this with an inherent non-offensive buff on her Noble Phantasm. See, Skatok wields the possibility of instant death, but Brynhildr makes up for it with the much more reliable Brynhildr's beloved trait bonus damage. Skatok has an automatic stun to the targeted enemy, while Brynhildr gives her entire party a 30% boost to dropping critical stars. For three whole turns. Scott Hawk is a very selfish servant. She's a powerhouse that you build an entire team around. But Brynhildr is a great team player, while still being her own consistent powerhouse too. On top of bettering her quick cards and everyone else's, Hero's Bridesmaid, Brynhildr's third skill, is a targetable critical star gathering that can be handed off to either herself or any of her teammates for three turns. And it heals them. Heals them pretty good, in fact. This means Brynhildr can be put on so many various teams. She could be support for Berserkers and Buster teams, forming many Buster Brave Chains, getting these guys to beat their meat so intensely that they're firing out critical stars at the drop of a hat, allowing you masters to choose where the star weight is actually applied to, and healing the heavy hitters in the process. She can improve crit-centric teams by, you guessed it, improving their star gain, and unloading face with your chosen tactical nuke. Even quick teams will love her since they too often face problems with low HP, and will always welcome a higher ceiling for damage range and star drop potential. Cause I heard she wields two really good quick cards, I'm just saying. Hell, you can even lump her with Skatok and be given orgasmic results. Though I'd personally team her up with Waver to give his first skill a proper run for its critical stars. Targetable crit gathering on top of targetable crit damage modifier with healing and NP boosto. I'm just saying! But she doesn't just have gifts to share with her friends. She also has gifts for her enemies as well. Beyond a spear to the face. It's her second skill. Her own primordial rune. This lowers any one enemy's Noble Phantasm damage by up to 30% at max level for one turn, and more importantly, lowers their chance of scoring a critical hit by up to 50% at max level for three whole turns. Doesn't seem like much until you're facing down one of those pesky chimeras, or gangbanging demons, or the god's greatest gift to mankind g g g g g g God, I couldn't even spit that out through sarcasm. And if you're up to the challenge, I think bonding with Brynhildr, as scary of a prospect as that might sound, is the cooler option, since her Bondcraft Essence provides both a 10% boost to all allies' buster cards, and all of their NP gain. Whether making hits, taking hits, playing with arts cards, quick cards, what have you. Scott Hawks is just a 15% quick boost for everyone. But hey, you bond with Scott Hawk, she'll literally fuck you to death. And if you bond with Brynhildr, well, yeah, she'll fuck you to death too. It's kinda death by spear and snoo snoo all around, so pick whichever you're best at. Are you a nice guy or a warrior? Actually, another fun fact, the Brynhildr's beloved trait. It's not maybe what you're thinking. Brynhildr doesn't get around, so to speak. Brynhildr's emotional problems stem toward more than just being nice to her. If you do anything heroic around her, and you're a man, or Jean Alter, she'll start falling head over heels for you and throw a spear through your chest as she falls down because love is pain. This is actually used to frightening effect in Fate Prototype Fragments of Blue and Silver, where her master drugs Brynhildr with a potion that overwhelms her with love for Arthur, and she almost slays him too. Yeah, if I haven't gotten across by now, Brynhildr's kind of a badass. If not for her own tortured soul viciously attempting to hold herself back, don't get it twisted, masters. She doesn't want to kill those whom she loves. 
but she must. Always keep in mind that knowledge is power, and my verdict is in, masters. Doing my best to keep my personal emotions over Brynhildur at bay, I have provided you with the raw mathematical facts. Scatot- Sc uh, Sc Skatak. Skatak is still a very powerful servant, but Brynhildr holds more than just power to her name. She wields incredible strength, self-sufficiency, and versatile utility for quite a number of unique team compositions, answering many of their weaknesses that no other servant will quite be able to answer the same way. She is not unfocused, though. She is designed to blend in almost anywhere, and still succeed on her own thanks in large part to the numbers she is given. I understand that her first banner appears just before the Valentine's Day event, but do not simply ignore her for Narrow Bride. She may have more targetable skills, but she also plays to very different strengths, primarily arts-based strengths. Consider what you need in your fights, Masters, and do not simply believe that a friend of yours will have Brynhildr available. This will be her only banner and rate up for over the next year and a half, and there are likely many other people who are also paying little heed to her then thanks to the walking distraction that is Nero's ego. Brynhildr is also relatively easy to ascend. Just make sure you have a few Hearts of Foreign Gods at the ready as the only unique rare item she needs. Much less demanding than Nero, to be honest. But that is for you to decide, Masters. Think on it. And should Brynhildr not be what you need, I hear those new craft essences are very good. <laughs> and if this enlightenment has troubled you, I am sorry. Though, if it has troubled you so, then may you be wiser with it in mind. Please, please, summon wisely, summon wisely. Master, Master, Master.